So it's Short Waves with Jaguar Shoes Collective. My name's George Godfrey, and today we are talking to both Lucy and Janie from Dream Nails. Hello. Hello. Oh, hey. How's your day been so far? Um, actually, something quite exciting just happened. So we are recording um, because we were meant to be playing Glastonbury this year on Williams Green stage, which is going to be very Amazing. exciting. Yeah. Um, but obviously, it's not happening. So. Um, the stage they're doing glass home brie so uh the person who's running the stage um is getting all the bands to do little sessions and i was just doing my portion in the garden and i befriended oh, the woman who lives two doors down who's also a drummer and has just had a baby <laughs> <laughs> so that's how my day is going i met a fellow female drummer wow uh, and entertain the whole neighborhood with my sick beats <laughs> yes uh, how about you, Jenny? I just pitched an article um, about J.K. Rowling's transphobia, um, re disturbing and disingenuous. Mm. I just pitched something about that. So watch this face. Let's talk about music then, because you have got the album on the way, 4th of September through Alcopop Records. Is it still yet untitled or have you decided on that? Self-titled. Okay, nice. Yeah. So, you thought there's nothing, there's nothing classier than a self-titled debut? Absolutely, I agree. Uh, That's it. So, in terms of the tracks, we've heard a couple of them so far. I wanted to ask about Kiss My Fist because that's the latest single, am I right? Yeah. You like us on the video. You like us when you have control. You want an on screen fantasy. But you hate us holding hands in the street. For those that don't know, there is quite a story behind that one. Do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, sure. So um, last summer, there was a really violent attack on two queer women who were traveling on a night bus in London. Um, and it came about because a group of boys were asking them to kiss and they refused. And then the situation escalated into violence and they were just like, there were photos of them just bloodied and bruised all over the internet and it was really sad. So we wrote a song about, you know, how frustrating it is in 2020 um, that queer people can't just get from A to B without getting beaten up. And also the irony that statistics show that lesbian is globally the most popular search term and right. porn category. And yet women in relationships with women are still being beaten up on the street. And there's just like such bizarre irony in the way that lesbians are fetishized and dehumanized. Yeah, absolutely. That's I didn't know that stat as well. That's uh, that's mental. Mm. Porn have, have some really good infographics. It's, it's an insight. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things one of the things I loved on uh, on the song as well was the lyric we're going to eat your brains. Like I think that was that just summed everything up quite nicely. So uh, yeah, good we job on that. Not an empty threat. Don't try <laughs> us. Yeah, we will. We will eat your brains. There's a proper um, kind of Pixie sort of breeders sound on this one. Were they like big influences for you guys? Ooh, that's such a nice reflection. It is. Well, I mean, well, hear, definitely hearing the bass. Yeah, in the bass, definitely. I mean, not not consciously. And Mimi, who is our bassist, is a huge Pixies fan. Um, we all love the Pixies and the Breeders. But we actually only finished. We went into the studio last summer. Um, to record the album and we'd only written the song a few weeks before it was basically unfinished when we went in so right. you know, we haven't really gotten back in the, the rehearsal room to write anything else since but maybe i don't know future stuff will be more pixies tinged and again we were maybe going to play with pearl jam and pixies at british summertime but we're oh, not anymore course. right yeah is that is yeah. that going to be rescheduled have you said anything about that I have no idea. I have no idea. They had no women on the lineup as well, so that's how we were hoping to. Yeah. Cost of getting booked, but yeah, maybe, maybe in the future. Ah, fingers crossed. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the uh, the song "Text Me Back." Chirps degree burns. Who came up with the title for that? Because that is that is a nice one. 
I don't even, I don't remember. I would like to say I came up with Chirps Degree Burns, but I think it was Anya. Well, Chirps is obviously, for those who don't know, it's London slang for flirting. Yeah. It can be a verb, an adjective, or a noun, depending on the sentence. <laughs> uh, but it was written after a fateful Glastonbury two, three years ago, where 50% of Dream Nails who will not, shall not be named, um, were spurned by their, by their Glastonbury loves and the song just literally appeared and now whenever we play it it's just a group therapy session but it's a banger it's my favorite it's a banger yeah it's developed into quite a beautiful universal unifying song that a lot of people can resonate with yeah. oh, definitely well like that one like um a lot of your other singles got some great artwork Who, who's behind that so we work with an amazing illustrator that we found on instagram called genie and she's based in barcelona and as soon as we reached out to her, she immediately got us and has subsequently designed all our album artwork and our singles and a bunch of merch, which is coming. So if you like the designs, we'll be yeah, able to so get them. And is, uh, is Jeannie doing the album? Yes. Yeah. Very, She's just uh, like the fifth member of the band now. She just completely gets what we're about, gets what we're trying to communicate. And it's like this really great balance between just like fun and anger and strength and just like a, a bit mm -hmm. mad. Definitely a bit mad, bright and colorful, like it's perfect. She's our, she's our dream. You guys have been putting music out for quite a few years now. Like I, I looked back, Bully Girl was 2016. Wow. Uh, wh wh why do you think it's taken so long to get to the album? We fronted all of the recording costs of the album ourselves. And I think what's really interesting is looking at our journey as a band um, because typically bands announce themselves to the music industry with their debut album, but we've had like two EPs, a double A side vinyl, several zines. Five years in, we're dropping our debut mm -hmm. album. And it speaks to a lot of like, you know, the politics of punk and feminism and like how we've been funded and self-managed. But also I think it is because we've advanced and level up so much in terms of our like, you know, musicality and our politics that actually what we have to offer the world now is much more mm. significant than it would have been if we had like, you know, had rich parents and had a label five years ago and recorded yeah, it absolutely. then. People can see our journey and see how far we've come and we're proud of that and we want to share it. Yeah, and I think it's really like paying dividends now, like five years in, that we just have such solid fan bases across like UK, Scandinavia and Europe. Like you said, it, it sort of gives you a more honest reflection of the journey up until now. And I did want to ask about that a little bit, because going back to the early days, we usually get some good stories uh, when we look back to the very beginning. What was the first ever Dream Nails gig like? Oh, my, OK. The first ever gig was actually a fundraiser for Women's Day, because Anya and I met through like feminist um, direct action in London. So we had like a big community of activists who all came along to our first gig. And we played like three songs. It was over in 10 minutes. And then we just like really got a flavour for it and haven't stopped since. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> first gig. Yeah. The energy has always been there. That's the main thing. And that's like what we've maintained and is the most important thing to our shows. Like we've levelled up musically an insane amount, but the riotous energy has been there since day one. Uh, I found another video because you mentioned that you've got a, a nice little Scandinavian following as well. And what was the sort of initial spark that, I don't know, got, got you guys a fan base there? We got booked for a festival called Firestorm Festival in Scotland. Yeah. And the promoter of that helped hook us up with two other Swedish shows and then we found a Norwegian show. That was actually a very eventful tour. So in, we first played in Gothenburg and we played in, a, in an old prison to five people. Oh, okay, okay, five, we'll go with five. And then we played in a squat in Oslo, which um, when we did our sound check, there was goths hanging from the ceiling <laughs> um, in a phenomena called human suspension. Do you know what that is, George? I've literally never heard of that, but I'm intrigued. Okay, it's goths that put meat hooks in meat their knees and the back of their neck and they swing from the ceiling. Just like... It's literally, they swing with a chair, a chair made of their own skin. So we were sound checking, <laughs> oh my God. 
It was there is a video somewhere on our um, but, Instagram. We'll have to repost it. It was so weird. We're doing these videos with Jaguar Shoes Collective, of course, their venue, the Victoria, is somewhere that you guys have played uh, quite a few times over the years now. What is it for you that you love most about about the venue? So many things. We love the Victoria because ever since the very beginning, they've been so like welcoming of creating a safe space, which is something we care a lot about as a feminist and like our feminist politics aren't just in our lyrics, but it's very much the spaces we navigate and having all women non binary kids to the front. And we hosted our like queer prom event there um, a couple of years ago, which we used to do with another band, Trumpet. And, you know, they really worked with us to make that a safe space for queer and trans people, which mm -hmm. is really significant because, you know, nightlife is a real space of harassment and exclusion for a lot of gender non-conforming um, mm. people and women. and it means a lot to be able to work like with a venue who really embraces community and like works with us side by side. Absolutely, yeah. they were so great. They retrained all their staff um, through the Good Night Out campaign, which works with, with venues and promoters to make um, venues safer spaces and keep everybody safe. Um, and they, yeah, we suggested it and then they took the initiative and got all of their staff and all their security trained as well. Um, and the sound is always really good there. And the guys that work in the kitchen are really jokes. And <laughs> it's, they read on the green room. <laughs> we're just gonna move yeah. in. <laughs> we're just, we're, we're happily moving. <laughs> the gig room at the Victoria is just like such a great little space as well. Like it's really vibesy. You can pack a lot of people in there, but it never feels like cramped or that you can't see. It's, it's great, like from the stage you can definitely like see and feel the energy of the crowd. They're not like too far back. Well, you played there quite a few times and you once opened for Bleached when they came and played. We did, yeah, that was a sweaty, sweaty gig. Yeah, they were so nice. They were so nice. Was, and they played the Albert Hall the night before with Caramel because they were touring with Caramel. Oh, wow. Fair. I'm going to let you go soon, but we've been ending our interviews with the Jaguar Shoes pinups. They're just a couple of quick fire questions. So don't think too much about your answers. So Janie, what is your favorite cocktail? I don't drink. Sorry. <laughs> I'll take that. I'll take that one. A black okay. Russian. What's what's in a black Russian? It is coffee liqueur and vodka. It's been getting me through, George. If I'm honest. Very nice. Okay. Well, Janie, how about this one then? What is the best way to pass time on the tour bus? Probably. Is this really sad? Listening to a podcast. <laughs> any, 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 any particular podcast? <laughs> okay. So, yes. My favorite podcast is a science comedy podcast called Ologies. And okay. it's presented by this amazing woman called Ali Ward. And it's just really lighthearted and easy to listen to you and you learn loads. I'm a massive dog. <laughs> <laughs> nice, I'll set that one up. Uh, Lucy, what was your favorite childhood TV show? <gasps> you know, the thing that popped into my head when you said that question is The Worst Witch. So I'm just gonna go with that. I Literally just popped into my head. So that's my honest answer. Nice, Janie. Who is your dream support slot? What's so it? For you to play with, yeah. A Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> Very nice. It could happen next year. We've had to reschedule some shows, so. It could. could All right, I'm going to put you both on the spot now. Uh, what is your favorite <laughs> song on the new album? Favorite song? Yeah. All our songs are bangers. Wall <laughs> <laughs> to wall bangers. You can't go wrong. Well. I don't think I, that, that's that's the that's the uh, cell. That's that's we should just write that on the poster. Yeah, that is it bangers. We should have just called it bangers. Why didn't we title it bangers? We should have just called it bangers. <laughs> it's not too late. It's not too late. Maybe okay. Well, the new the new album, not called bangers, but it should be called, <laughs> is going to be out on the fourth of September through Alcopot Records. Uh, guys, thanks so much for talking. Thank you. And take it easy. You can listen to shortwaves at jaguarshoes.com forward slash radio. And also don't forget to follow us on Instagram. You can find us at Jaguar Shoes Collective and at Victoria Dolston. Oh, oh.